Hello and welcome to Spring Bar Media's Active Tips. Today we're going to take a look at five things you might not know you could do with your Promethean board. The first one is to create a countdown clock. You're going to click on Tools and go down to More Tools and click on Clock. Your clock pops up with analog and digital, or you could change it to be just digital or just analog. But these arrows here, the down pointing arrow and the up pointing arrow, will let you do a countdown or count up clock. So I'm going to do a countdown clock. I'm going to have it play for four seconds. And then you can choose the sound you want it to be. Now you can see that these sounds here aren't the sounds that come with Active Inspire. You could actually use any sound that's in a WAV format. So I downloaded the Bat Time and Batman theme, or you could record your own using the sound recorder. Then you can also see what happens after the timeout. Maybe you want to toggle your reveal tool or reset the page or turn to the next page. And then you can resize your clock. And if you hit the pause button, you can pause your clock uh, at a certain time. The clock moves with you from page to page. The second thing is to remove that pop-up that happens when sounds are playing. And to fix that, we're going to go into View, and we're going to go down to Customize. And we're going to go over here to Settings. So this is on Multimedia. It may be a little bit different. Before I click there, take a look at the clock tool one that I'm on. You can actually change it from the 24-hour clock. If you uncheck this, you'll get your AM and PM. I'm going to go down to Multimedia, and you want to make sure that you have Show Sound Controller unchecked. That way you can play a sound and not have that sound controller pop up in front of your screen. The third thing you might not know you could do with your Promethean board would be to extract text. So any text that you've typed in, if you highlight it, and then you drag it, it makes another copy of it. This copy is editable, it's movable, and you can make it bigger or smaller or a different color. You can also create your own backgrounds and templates. Anything that you have on your page, you could add to your resource library. So I'm going to do a right click. And whoops, sorry. I don't want this actually selected. Now I'm going to do the right click. I'm going to hit Add to Resource Library. You can add this whole page to your resource library. This means it can be a template that you can use over and over again. It's going to add to whatever section of your resource library you're in. So if you go over to your browser, so let's pin them, let's go to our resource library. I'm going to go into Templates. Now when I go over here on my page and I do my right click, Add to Resource Library, it'll be adding this page right here into the general template. If you're working with making templates, you may want to align objects and snap them to grid. This is all with that same right-click functionality. So if I were to make some shapes on the page, and I wanted to align them, I'm going to grab all three of them. And I'm going to do a right click or click on this menu. And I'm going to choose align. I'm going to align these to the top. And they're going to snap together. So now they're aligned up. Here's align in action. So if I move these blocks and then I want to align them, I'm going to kind of grab both of them. I'm going to click on this menu right here. I'm going to do align center X. And now they snap to where they need to fit. If I had a grid on the page, I could actually have these snap to grid. So I'm going to go to Edit. And I'm going to make this much thicker. There. 
There we go. Whoa, a little bit too big. Let's go back down a bit. Okay. This will work even if you don't have the grid on, but it's easy for you to see kind of how this is going to snap. So now I'm going to do a right click on the background and I'm going to hit snap to grid. So now when I move this square, it's going to snap into place. So you can see this is snapping to the bottom left corner. And I can change that by clicking on the object and then clicking on the property browser and under restrictors can snap snap to top. Now when I snap it, it snaps to the top. This will work even without the grid being visible, so let's go back and turn that off. So now when I move this square around, it's going to snap into position where the top of it is meeting one of those lines. Here's snap to grid in action. So you can see these are tangram shapes that are set to snap to the grid. So now when I place them on the lines, they snap into place. If I want to get rid of this snap to grid, I'm going to do the right click again and I'm going to click on snap to grid to turn it off. Now I can move my shapes anywhere I want. Grab another shape here for our bonus. Our bonus is that you can create your own pull tabs. So I created an arrow and I'm going to fill it with a different color. I'm going to turn my arrow around because I want my pull tab to be off the side on the right. So I'm going to take my arrow and I'm going to take my shape. I'm going to group them together. Now I can push them off to the side and create something where I have pull tabs that I can bring in. So these could be the answers, these could be the directions, these could be different questions. There's a bunch of different ways to work with pull tabs. If you're interested in this, you can look for a whole pack on Promethean Planet that includes the arrows and different kinds of colored pull tabs. Thanks so much for watching today's active tip. I hope you've enjoyed it. Springboard Media offers a full range of professional development courses and workshops. Email us at education at springboardmedia.com or follow us on Twitter for more tips at WeSellMath.